Hi everyone, just a quick reminder that if you want to follow along the journey of making this dress in real time with me, both on Instagram and YouTube, then please consider supporting me on Patreon. You get to choose how much to pledge per month and you will receive live updates both on my close friends Instagram stories and access to all of the YouTube videos right now. Hope you enjoy the video. Right, I've finally finished sewing all of the seams together. Now it's um, time to iron all of the seam allowances open. So what I mean by that is, like for example up here, flattening that out by ironing that flat, and then for this triangle insert, it would be a matter of opening up these seams here and ironing open that, opening that up and ironing it flat and so I'm going to be doing that for all of the seams so there's a lot to iron um, and then after that I'm probably going to trim trim it off just a bit especially the parts where it's like super wide seam allowance like this um, I don't need all of that excess fabric so I would probably trim it to the standard two centimeter seam allowance everywhere um, and then after that, this is what I'm thinking, but I don't know if it's a good idea or not. Basically, I know that to finish off seams, what you can do is, and, and make them finish off, like, finish them so that there are no raw edges, is fold the edge under like that, and then hand sew all along here, and only catch the lining, which is this... Um, cotton fabric so you don't go out um, to the outside where the satin is and then that way the stitching is all invisible but considering how many seams there are that's a lot of hand sewing and I'm not sure if I want to do that or the other thing I could do is um, take out all of the basting stitches and then sort of fold these two edges in on one another and then top stitch it with the machine and then that way it's just a free standing like seam and it's not actually sewn to the dress itself. I feel like this would provide a lot more um, like it would make the seams more durable in a way like you don't have these parts flapping about and you wouldn't have it necessarily this only this seam here holding everything together if you if you do this and you sew this as well then you literally have this seam the original seam and then obviously the one on the other side to hold all of these dress panels together so I, I don't know I'm still pondering what I should do about that but for now I'm just going to take this to the ironing board iron out all of the seams flat and then trim down the seam allowances so they're all even. So let's go do that. So I've just finished ironing open all of the seam, the seams on the skirt, as you can tell. Um, after doing all of this, I've realised that there is a lot to hand sew if I were to um, fold the raw edge over and then hand sew that down. So I've decided I'm just going to use a zigzag stitch across all of these raw edges instead. 
Um, and I'm not going to do what I said that I, what the other option was, which was to fold the edges inwards. Actually, maybe I would do that. Oh, I don't know. Um, look, I'm just going to cut off the excess seam allowance and take out these basting stitches and then I'll see what I'll do. <laughs> I haven't made up my mind completely yet, but it's either it's either going to be zigzag stitching across the raw edges or it's going to be taking out these basting stitches and then um, folding these edges inwards on themselves and then top stitching that down. I feel like the second option would would make this last longer, um, whereas the zigzag stitching probably wouldn't help that much with the fraying. I mean, it would help a little bit, but the satin really, really likes to fray. Hmm. I'll think about it. Okay, I just trimmed off some of the excess seam allowance and it's... Ugh, I just hate how it's so messy doing this. So I'm just going to take it straight over to the sewing machine, do some zigzag stitching, and when I do come to an area where there's just really, really wide seam allowance, just chop it off at the table and then continue with my zigzag stitching and just do that on all of these seams. I mean, yeah. If only I had a serger. Oh, well, I am going to do that and... Hmm. I still need to figure out what I'm going to do with the waist because at the moment um, I've just sewn up all of the seams so there is no opening um, but I don't know if you remember me saying but I did um, sew some of the seams with long stitches so they can easily be taken out if I need to. I will need to, I just don't know which ones I'm going to take out. Okay, let me go to the sewing machine and zigzag stitch everything. <laughs> I've actually never done a zigzag stitch to finish off my edges before, but I found this stitch, which looks like it could be used as like an overlocking thing, hopefully. We'll see. And I set my stitch length to three, and then that's the smallest like space I can have between, between the stitches. So let's see how this goes zoom in so you can see I'm not sure if this is really hang on maybe let me make the stitch length a bit longer I don't know if this is actually doing anything let's see I guess so. Hang on, let me keep going. I feel like it keeps missing some. That looks... <laughs> so this is the result. I don't know if you can see that. But that's not really what I'm after. Okay, let's try a different stitch. I am going to change the stitch to... I don't know how this is different to this. Okay, let's just do that one, actually, yes, let's try that.
I don't really like this one either. Hmm. Let me try try number six. Oh, that's why. My stitch length changed when I changed the stitch. Okay, let's um, try this. I don't like that one either. I'm going back to the regular zigzag. Yes, let's do regular zigzag and set the stitch length to four and the stitch closeness to one. Let's try that. Oh wait, that's wrong. Okay, I got it wrong. That is supposed to be long and that's supposed to be short. Let's try that. Oh, that's better. Yes, that's what I want. Okay, I found the... Okay, so I found the good stitch that I want to basically overlock the edges without an overlocker. It is regular zip, uh, not the zip, zip, zigzag, that's it. <laughs> regular zigzag stitch. And then I've got the length of the stitches like widthwise going across to six. And then the distance between each of the stitches is one. So that is giving me whoop, this result here. You can see that I tried other things, but they just did not seem to work and actually stop the edges from fraying more. So this is what I'm going to go with and I'm going to continue doing this across all of my raw edges, which is a lot. So let's do it. I just did zigzag stitching on one seam and I hate it. <laughs> uh, you can see I tried some things up here, tried some more stitching and then some more stitching and then I got to this really dense stitching which I thought would work. I mean it does work to stop fraying but it is so bulky and I just don't like, I just don't like it. So. <laughs> I've changed my mind and I am going to, I think I am going to end up doing the method that I initially thought that I was going to do, which is to turn the raw edges under and then hand sew them to the lining of the skirt. Now I know this is going to take forever, but I'd rather do it that way and not see the raw edges at all than to have this. <laughs> so yeah i'm going to i guess i'm going to just start doing it um i guess it would be good to put this on the ironing board cut all of the excess seam allowance and then start turning these under and hand sewing it down i i don't yeah i don't think there is any other way that would make me happy <laughs> which is unfortunate yeah I, I much prefer not having any raw edges visible and this is like the d first dress or costume that I'm making that I want it to be really nicely finished yeah because this is a project that I had been planning to do since the movie and all of the promo pics came out 
last year back in like September so yeah it's like I wouldn't say it's my dream dream project but it is like it's up there so I do really want to make it as nice as I can make it so I don't want this I would rather have this so let's do that hi guys it's day two of week two I, I would say um, it's now Saturday the 2nd of May and I am going to get started by um, basically getting rid of the raw edges as best as I can. So after having last night to think about it and watching Marika's new video on um, all of the different methods that you can use to finish off seams, um, Marika's from uh, Enchanted Rose Costumes, by the way, on YouTube. Um, the method that I'm thinking of using based on her video is called like the um, tuck. I, I don't know. I don't remember the exact name, but something. It, it's basically where you tuck the fabric in like that and then you just sew like that. And then that will just keep the fabric um, raw edges tucked under, basically. So the raw edges aren't necessarily gone as such but it will help um, a little bit and also when you iron it out as well it will keep those raw edges being tucked under so and I also have the option of at a later stage if I feel like hand sewing all of those um, edges down to the lining of fabric I could do that as well but I think this is the good temporary well it's not temporary it's a good solution for now that doesn't require so much hand sewing so I can literally just machine stitch all of that down so first first off I am going to bring this to the ironing board and actually iron all of these raw edges under like that um, so I'm going to do that for all of the edges and I might need to trim off some of the excess fabric as well like this is this is a lot of excess satin fabric which I would trim down to match the cotton um, so yeah, that is what I am going to do and I will probably just time lapse all of the ironing because that's not really fun to watch. And as for the sewing, that's pretty self-explanatory as well. So let's get to it. So I've just finished ironing open and over all of the seam, the raw edges for each of the seams. So you can see that that's starting to take shape. <laughs> this is the situation on the ironing board. Um, some of the, it was really hard to keep this really flat. Um, so I'm just hoping that it will at least hold its crease so I can take it over to the sewing machine and easily sew it. Um, I don't think there's much to say about this. Um, I found that I didn't really have to trim much of the excess seam allowance because when I turned it under um, a lot of that fabric was going to be hidden anyway so um, I didn't have to do that much trimming which is good. Um, and yeah, I found that the basting stitches actually really helped when turning these edges under because you don't have the, the um, satin layer and the cotton layer coming apart. So I found that the basting stitches really helped there. Um, yeah, to the sewing machine.
just finished sewing all of the seam allowances over like this. Here's a nice close up shot so you can see all of the raw edges have just been turned under and then top stitched down like that. And then what I'm thinking of doing is just taking this back to the ironing board and ironing flat, um, flat open all of the seams once again. Um, and also just because this has happened, I'm assuming that a lot of the satin and the cotton has started to wrinkle. Um, so just ironing, ironing it all out again. And then I think it would be time to move on to the waistband soon. I'm thinking of just ironing first, taking a break, and then figuring out what I'm going to do for a waistband. Let's do that. Also, one more thing. I found that when sewing um, along these edges, I found that the closer I sew to the edge, the better. Otherwise, I end up with something like... Oh, these ones are all pretty neat. Um, yeah, most, most of the time I, I sewed pretty close to the edge. I would say that, yeah, these ones are generally quite neat. Um, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, so I found that sewing close to the edge helped um, keep everything in place and lying nice and flat. Whereas if you sew closer to the actual seam itself, you might miss catching some of the fabric, whether it be the satin or the cotton. Um, and it also just means that this part out on the edge is not very flat because you've sewn too close to the um, actual seam. Um, yeah, that's, that's about it for the seam finishings on the inside. I think that this is much better than what it was before um, and it will help with the longevity of the inside of this dress and I was thinking that I could like hand sew all of along these edges to keep them lying flat but I think for now I'm just going to iron it down and that will be enough and once I've actually finished the whole dress and everything if I feel like doing some hand sewing each night um, to finish off these to make sure that they always lay down flat then I might, but there's no guarantee at this stage because I'm a lazy person. <laughs> okay, to the ironing board, like I said.